This is why today is gonna be such a good day. Do you see it? Do you see it? I've always wanted to drive one of these, and now we get to. Yeah, it's a caliber, but it's a caliber SRT4. And I grew up in the 90s and early 2000s, and these things were cool. And now we get to drive one. Today's gonna be a good day. Since I'm super tall, we're gonna try a chest mounted GoPro. Say hi to YouTube, Eric. Hey YouTube, you'll see me soon. <laughs> 2008 Dodge Caliber SRT4, always wanted to drive one. Now we're gonna drive one. You know what? I think the chest mount's gonna work. Okay, everybody, so we are in 2008 Dodge Caliber SRT4. These cars made 285 horsepower, 265 foot-pounds out of a 1.4 liter, 2.4 liter, thank you, Eric, 2.4 liter turbocharged engine, the same engine that was in the Neon SRT4. And we're off, we haven't broken the car yet. Ooh, turbo sounds. Yeah. Oh. All right, it's been a minute since I've driven a manual car, so we're still getting used to this. But this is a 2008 Dodge Caliber SRT4. It's a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine making 285 horsepower and 265 foot-pounds. Now, if you grew up in the 90s like me, and right around like the early to mid 2000s, these cars started to come out, you've always been intrigued by these cars, but a lot of people, because the SRT4 Caliber and the SRT4 Neon were based on Calibers and Neons, they were cheap economy cars made in the mid 2000s by Dodge. Like, what you know, they weren't, they weren't the best quality in the entire world. But, now we're getting used to the clutch. When Dodge put in these monster 2.4 liter turbocharged engines, people started to tune them and people were making like 300 wheel horsepower with like a tune, an intake, and exhaust. So the same way that we think of like the Fiesta ST and the Focus ST and the Focus RS now, this, this was kind of one of the first. This was after the Eclipse GST and the GSX in the 90s. The SRT4 was really one of the first big power, easily tunable four cylinder engines. People don't buy these cars for the interior quality. People buy them because they're fast. So we've been in this car for at least two minutes now. <laughs> Let's give it a rip. Woo! <laughs> um, yeah, they're fast. They are fast. Oh my God. Wow, that was oh surprising. Oh my God. <laughs> now I know nothing ever looks as fast on video as it feels in person. Like I understand that. But that was a second gear rip, and at 30 miles an hour, you could feel the front tires starting to skip loose. Now it's like 10 degrees outside, so traction isn't the best. But that is, this is a properly fast car. This is properly fast, okay? Roll into it, turbo spool, spool, spool to the floor. Whoa! Uh, it pulls. It pulls really hard. This is, without a shred of doubt, the fastest four-cylinder I've ever driven. And I, you can say what you want about, oh, it's a caliber. Yeah, we know it's a caliber. It is a fast caliber. Oh my God, I'm so, I'm so, so surprised by this car. And I knew, I knew it was gonna be fast. Like I knew that, it's a 300 horsepower, Turbo for it. This car weighs. This car only weighs about 3,200 pounds, which is really surprising considering it's kind of an SUV boxy shape. They're not heavy. See, when we come to film these cars, we come to like this very like small industrial park where there's not a lot of people. There's not a lot of cars, and this is the first car where we're having trouble filming it because you need room. Like you can't just rip on it. You need a few hundred yards. As much crap as people talk about the interiors, 
this one's fine. It doesn't rattle. It doesn't make any noise. Nothing's broken. Um, this one has 121,000 miles on it, so it's not like this is a super low mileage example. We almost just got hit up, hit head on by a Camry, so. Yeah. In case we died, this would have been our last video. Yep. And there's a lot of plastic on the inside, but like I said, it's a mid-2000s Dodge product. I mean, um, on the highway, these things are known, I think, for getting mid to high 20s, even though they make 300 horsepower, which has always been one big drawback of the high power four-cylinder, is you're still buying a four-cylinder so that a lot of them don't make power until the high, until the higher revs. But even being four cylinders, cars like the Evo, cars like the STI, even the base WRX, and I know it's heresy to you know compare an SRT4 to a WRX, but let's be honest, a lot of people do. This actually gets kind of sort of the mileage that you would want out of a four cylinder, even though it makes give or take 300 horsepower. And this one, even though it just has an air intake, I'm, I'm shocked at how fast 285 feels. If it really is still stock, if, if it is, and I think it is, I think it just has the air intake. This car feels way faster than any other sub 300 horsepower car I've ever driven. So overall between the interior still being solid, despite all the shit that people talk on the internet, despite everything that people have said about calibers, this one in particular, I don't know about your caliber, this one is super, super solid. So overall, I give the Caliber SRT4 two huge thumbs up, especially because you can get clean examples like this one. This is a 2,800, 120,000 mile clean Carfax, bone stock, basically unmolested SRT4 Caliber. This one is for sale right now. Description is, link is in the description below for 7,500 bucks. And you get the combination of room, of gas mileage, so Caliber SRT4, yeah, huge thumbs up. Love this car. Uh, thank you again to Shocked Autos Horse in Union, Missouri for letting us drive it. Uh, come get it before somebody else does. I really like this car. I want it. If you have the chance to buy one of these inexpensively and like from a good reputable source, you should probably just do it. Like Shocked Autosource in Union, Missouri.